a low down on the lowers. This is the Ranger 3 GTX wide. Uh, I've had this boot now uh, for over 150 days. So I got them um, yeah, last year and uh, I thought I'll give it a while before I do anything about this boot and uh, really put it through its paces and just see how it's um, stood up. So yeah, I did a, a month in Europe at uh, Sub-Zero. It's probably neg 20 most of the time we're over there. Uh, mostly on snow, glacier kind of country. Um, really, really good. It was a nice warm boot. I've just got their standard liner inside, not the thermal liner that they also um, uh, option out. Uh, yeah, most of the time I've been using them in the high country, Samba country, just punishing them up in the tops uh, as, as most of us do. Swampy stuff as well, they've been exceptional. The Gore-Tex liner in these is the best I've used. Uh, I was getting brand new out of the box without doing anything to them. Uh, about seven, eight hours and um, I'd be out there, not a drop, and then I'd back that up from day to day to day, and yeah, they perform superb. So now it's come down since the boot's a bit older now, I'm getting maybe three to four hours, and eventually the uh, you'll get a bit of dampness in. Still not saturated, but you will get a you know a little bit of a wet toe around on the sock. So just a little walk through of the boot itself. So Lower, as a company, have been making boots for near on 100 years. They're, uh, they're a German company, and as we know, the Germans make very, very high quality things, um, and their boots are no exception. So, they've used a Vibram sole on this series of boot. Now, Vibram soles, um, we, we've seen a lot of them here in Australia, and um, I think they make a big range of, of different levels of sole, different tiers. So, if you've had a pair of uh, cheaper boots with a Vibram sole on it, don't be too scared away if you haven't liked them. The, the sole that, that Lower are using on these boots is their top tier and it's made of very good components and very good rubber. So you're getting, uh, it's quite a firm sole but it's very grippy and uh, the components are very good in it. So uh, yeah, I really like this sole. Um, it's got a nice sharp edge, especially walking on a heavy contour. It does give you a lot of grip. So uh, yeah, it's a thumbs up for me on, on the sole they chose on this. Um, you got you know, a small amount of rounding, not a massive amount. In the snow, it was enough. Um, I, I usually like a boot that's got a bit of a high rounding just to protect it, but um, yeah, it's been, it's been plenty. The components in here, like all of the furniture here, you've got roller, roller bearing lace up from here, 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 and then this one here is a lock. So what that allows you to do is you can get the tension over the bridge of your foot how you want it whether you want it loose or tight separately to the tension up here on your ankle so if you want to give your feet a bit of a break one day or you're on some flatter terrain you can really loosen these out and still get that ankle support up high which is, I think is a really nice feature of this boot uh, and they've got a bit of a unique um, system on the tongue just like all good hiking boots it's all sewn in but this little um, tongue keeper here I'll, sh I'll give you a closer look at that later when I, when I lace them up but um, yeah, they've really thought this out well. Uh, all of the all of the cleats here are very positive on the laces, and because the laces all pull through the roller bearings, you get a very even tension through here. Um, you can see these have been laced up a lot, and there's no wear on any of those laces either, which is pretty important. It's nothing worse than busting a lace when you're out there. But um, usually, my laces get chewed up really fast um, with other boots but yeah these have been very very good just a quick look at the lacing system on this I'll try to make it fast so it's not boring but um, you can see as I pull up on these all of those roller bearings really come into play so it tensions up really evenly across here the next step across is a locking lug so that'll now keep the tension in here this is not going to move anymore go up one more and then you're on to this, um, this neat little tongue keeper here. So basically, you're coming around this cleat with both of your laces, locking it off, and that's going to keep that tongue from rolling around, and it gives you a, a lot of comfort across the front here. So this will not move or wiggle around like it can in some boots as you're, as you're uh, on your hike. So yeah, very well thought out. There's a lot of merit in that. Now when you buy a set of lowers, uh, you'll note that inside the box, they've really gone to the effort to show you a lot about the care of this product. 
it's not just a leather boot. You've got to you've got to do a little bit of upkeep with these to keep this breathable membrane going and to keep the waterproofness up to it. So to start you off, they give you um, very clear instructions. It's all shown with photos how to clean them and whatnot. And they give you some of this. Um, it's like a rejuvenator. It's a bit like a leather care cream, I suppose. Um, it's called Lower Active. Um, basically, the method is clean your boots. I just run them underwater with just a brush, just clean them all out, and um, wait till they dry off. I put this Active Cream on there, and that just makes them all nice and supple again. And then I wait till that dries off, and then I use a, a water stop. So lower make their own water stop in an aerosol. It's a bit hard to get here in Australia because of the aerosol part. So they have recommended other water-based waterproofers like the Granger's uh, stop wet and things things like that. Uh, water repel. Just make sure it's not oil-based, and uh, lower being very specific with that. So not Snow Seal or or um, Nubuck Leather Care or the Dub and all those kind of things. Um, the reason being is that you'll lose your breathability if you if you clog all those pores up. So make sure it's a water-based waterproofer that you're topping up with. Um, that doesn't have to be done very often. Uh, I've been getting good results and only doing this uh, probably every, I don't know, 20 days or so. Uh, and yeah, these boots are performing really, really well. They still uh, they still look good. There's minor scuffing around here, but that's just wear and tear from me uh, in the bush. But yeah, the leather itself is still nice and supple and soft. And Before putting any of the care products on, um, it's recommended that you just basically clean your boots. So just get any of that dirt, so that when you actually put your product on, you're not working that all into the membrane. Clean them, dry them, and then go ahead and uh, use the active cream. After you've given your boot a quick clean, and the boot's dried out, grab some of the active cream, and um, just put some all over the boot. And it's just a matter of um, basically just massaging that in to get a, an even coverage across everywhere. The other thing that I really like about this, they've put a lot of thought into the shank. Most boots will just have a steel shank that's just uh, basically the shape of the sole and it just runs in between the layers in the rubber here. Um, Lowell went one further and, and looked at um, how our foot actually rolls. So when you, when you place your foot down, most of the pressure is on this side and as you transfer your weight forward, it crosses over to the ball of your foot and they've made a shank that copies that shape as it comes across and um, there's a lot of merit to that uh, you can really feel this when you compare this to other boots especially with a heavy pack when you've got a heavy pack on when you when you're walking it almost gives you that kind of um, pop feel through the step and it does help a lot on the trail you get a lot less fatigue and it just helps you to stay where you want to be in the boot instead of rolling over uh, you're just not fighting it on the contours either so yeah, that's a, it's an interesting concept and you can really feel it in the boot um, as you walk as opposed to just the standard um, flat shank. So yeah, another another neat little feature that's kind of hidden in hidden technology inside these boots. So if you're looking for a good hiking boot that's uh, it's a good all-rounder for our alpine environments, um, yeah, check out the, the lower ranges. Um, if you're a heavier guy and you want a little bit of a higher boot, the Tibet, the next one up, is a very good option as well. They're a bit too much boot for me, um, but I have noticed that the guys that are carrying heavy packs or the heavier set guys or the guys that like a little bit of a higher boot uh, are fitting into them well and loving them. Uh, similar sidewall as well, uh, they give you a lot of uh, ankle support so you're not getting that rollover. But um, they're not cheap guys, it's a bit of an investment, but if you space that out over the years, I mean some boots are only getting guys, I've heard of them just getting one season out of a set of boots, I mean my last set of boots uh, like this got about eight years out of them, so if you look after them and you, and you space that out, uh, I think they're retailing just over the 500 Australian dollar mark, so yeah they are a bit of an investment but it's uh, definitely worthwhile, uh, it all starts at your feet, you know, if you've got comfy feet you'll have a, a comfy trip, so. Yep, that's the lower.